And so what we have now is an interest rate of about 18% if you go on the uh, government scheme. Mm -hmm. So you are now a taxpayer and you get something back. Okay? So that is something which has brought the, 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 the purchasing of a home closer. But that's not enough. And I say that's not enough because um, you, we, we're talking about $30,000 and the average civil servant uh, will be earning about $2,500 a month. Mm -hmm. And that's from their statistical services. services. That's what they say. Um, when you work it out at the current exchange rates, you are nowhere near being able to afford it. And so in government's wisdom, and um, what they've come up with mm -hmm. uh, is the uh, rent to buy uh, scheme. Mm -hmm. That rent to buy scheme means that for now, the bit of the home that, let's say you buy 10% of the house, because that's what you can afford to buy at your current uh, earning level. So you're buying 10% of that home today, and you're paying rent on the 90%. As your um, income increases, which is the natural progression in life, your, in, your, your, your income will increase. Yes. Then you can buy more of the property. And if you want to buy the whole lot, then you are able to do so. And so for people to get on the housing ladder, now it's been made possible. With the but just price. for a selected group, you mentioned it's, just the civil and public servants. The, what about the private ones? It has been uh, uh, um, opened up now. That was when they did the pilot. And now they've gone into full, uh, should I call but it? But is it easily accessible? People don't know about it. So why is it that people don't they don't know, know about, about it. it? And people don't know about it. And uh, these are, this is my personal view. I believe that uh, with the current economic situation, government would be ill-advised to go out and tell everyone about it and be inundated when they have to put up with some part of the So balance. there will be a mad rush. Which, onto the program. Exactly. And they cannot release if, the if, funds. If, if it's all put out there. And so I believe in, you know, progressing it, making sure... Now, that, that's a very good one. Mm -hmm. Now, you are saying it's not even something popular with most of the citizenry. So let's talk about what most of the citizenry find themselves. Uh, most of them are, you know, practically finding the monies, trying to save, to build. Others are also trying to secure mortgages to buy. And that, I tell you, is not affordable, looking at the prices we see yes, on the market. Yes. And I'll also say that. Look. And especially, let me add this, in October 2021, the Nubio report uh, said, that, uh, said that Accra was the second uh, highest, you know, uh, expensive, city, expensive to, city. Yes, 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 to live in. And also considering the buying of uh, its properties. So it tells you where we stand. Um, for homeowners, they'll be happy with that data because, you know, the houses are rising in value. Mm. And that is the attraction for people to buy homes. If you buy a home, it would, over the years, it will appreciate in value for you. And so it's always a good thing to buy your own home. And so people aspire to that, um, you know, to buying their own home. And that's good. That's good because... Um, with the prices that we talk of, mm -hmm. yes, the prices are rising or the prices are high. Rent are also high. But people are in homes today. Mm -hmm. Most of them are paying a commercial rent. The idea is to lower that rent. Okay. Okay. And to lower the cost of homes to afford people the luxury of buying their own homes. And that is a, a direction that has been taken. In terms of houses being expensive or the cost of living being high, I'm, I'm afraid I can advise, but I think we have competent people dealing with the, the whole issue. It so, is a global issue. So let me hear from you. I would want to know our discussion today, affordable housing, a myth or reality, let me know where you stand on this. What is your take on this one? Uh, if you've ever bought a home, even in the attempt you're considering uh, building a house or purchasing a house, what has been the experience? Um, the price, was it affordable 
or you would say it was unaffordable. So do so, send me a WhatsApp message or an SMS on this WhatsApp number, 0500-180-697, 0500-180-697, also on the bottom of the screen. Could you, it looks you're trying to, to me, it seems you're trying to defend that, look, uh, affordable housing is a reality, even though you are actually also confirming these uh, extreme high prices of you know, houses here. And as a developer, you see the figures every now and then as you build homes. So how does you know, the lower income earner also be in the position to build or purchase a home for him or herself? Okay, um, Imam, let's look at this way. We are talking of affordable housing. What government is addressing mm -hmm is social housing. Social housing is where, through subsidies, you lower the rental that people pay on homes. Where affordable housing is where, you know, if you're earning 80,000 or 100,000, we say up to 30% of your income mm -hmm. can be used to buy a place. And that's why people always say, oh, well, 30%, so it's affordable. But we have um, a large majority of people in this country whose salaries, 30% of it, would not even rent you a property today. Yes. Okay? And we are, I'm quite aware of that. But what government is doing mm -hmm. effectively is going to lower the, um, the, 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 the deficit or affordable homes that we have in the market in the, in the country today. Now talk about what the government is doing. We've seen affordable housing since 1964, all the way to these many governments that have come and left. Uh, started with uh, His Excellency, the former president, President John Adjokunfu Four, to His Excellency John uh, Dramani Mahama. And now we have His Excellency Nanado Akufad also doing a similar thing. And at the end of the day, we don't see it you know, being established. I you don't dare, see most of I these dare, homes I dare being say, built. I dare say it started way before that. 1964. Thank you. Because Nkrumah started building. Yes, so I, I mentioned it, 1964. Yes. And so it is something that will continue. But if that approach is followed, we followed it all these years and it hasn't worked. And it will not work. Okay. You know, you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting dis different but results. But you were talking about the government doing and so experience. what government is doing is not necessarily going out with government money or going to um, get loans to come mm -hmm. and build. Okay. What they are doing is taking away the, the uh, you know, the, uh, the most, um, creating housing mm -hmm. for the most vulnerable in our society. Yeah. And the way of doing that is making sure that they can at least get decent, affordable rental, rental accommodation. But you would agree with me, live. with that in mind, yeah. at the end of the day, when these developments are done, these properties do not go to these vulnerables in the society. Would you agree with me? Not necessarily. Quite a number of them. I've seen affordable houses that have, you know, sprout up. You go to Comte 25 right now. TDC has done a similar project, even with SNIT. And uh, we all know the reality on the ground. The big men buy them. Then later they rent it out to the so-called lower income earners. So then, in effect, nothing really happened. Good. Now, I am not here to speak for government or to advise government yeah. on um, what on okay. what to, to, to do. Okay. I try and stray away from that area. But let me, let me, let me put something down here. If, if we go in, and if government goes in and says, okay, people with disabilities, mm -hmm. single parent families, and so on, are not able to buy homes. And it is government's responsibility to make sure that people are housed yes. in an economy. I agree with you. And I would say that's when social housing comes in. And so once those numbers of people are taken out of the affordable housing um, um, numbers, you lower 
that deficit that we say we have. Okay. Which is what, 1.7 million? 1.7. Yes. Okay. So if 700,000 people are taken out of that, now we say we are at 1 million. But if you have put in the framework to allow these people to be taken out and housed properly, now what you have is a more manageable thing which can be uh, um, dealt with even at the price level that we have. And at that price level, there are ways of doing it. You can't buy it all at once. You don't have enough money to buy it. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of the situation. So you think it's also our attitude, our behavior towards you know, buying homes. Most people do not go for mortgages. They just want to build from scratch. Probably if they now decide to go for mortgages, then housing will become affordable. Um, most people do that, but we are still in the same position as we have always been. We are not getting anywhere. What we are getting is an eyesore when you drive around our major cities mm. with uncompleted homes. Mm. I would like this policy to be expanded to make sure that people who are benefiting from it buy through certified or, or recognizable developers who are doing the right thing and using the right professionals to do the job. That in itself would bring a bit of sanity into the housing environment. It is very important that we take a step back and look at the whole thing uh, holistically. Now, when we look at housing as a stand, we can see that Government will come build 200 homes and go away. Four years later, we'll come and build 200 more homes if we are able to finish. And it, does, it is not working. And it would not work because in the interim, the <laughs> urbanization is growing. And so the number of people needing homes in our urban areas mm -hmm. is multiplying. Okay. okay. And the homes are not being provided. To provide them, I think government should take care of the most vulnerable and build social homes. Social housing should be where government focuses. What is social housing? Social housing because... I mean, what is it when you say social housing? Oh, what is, what, what is it? Social housing is when um, the, the cost of, let's say, rental is subsidized. Okay, it's subsidized through different means. It could be through the tax system. Okay? It could be through that. And I'll give you an example. In the UK, <clears throat> for a long time, um, houses below £250,000 had uh, what they call the MIRAS applied to it. Mortgage Interest Relief at Source is what it was. And so interest relief is what was being done. But it was being done at source. Now, when we say at source, it means when your salary is coming in, we know that, oh, he's on the Mara's scheme. And so he gets the relief. So it's applied to his tax. Okay? If government in Ghana today was offering something of that nature, it is a big incentive for people to start paying their tax. People will now come into the tax bracket because the benefits they get from buying a home you know, would be more than the uncertainty of saying, oh, I'm, not going to, I'm going to hide from the tax man, you know, and go around being chased around. So it is something which, if, you know, put in place properly, mm -hmm. we could benefit from. Now, give us proper details of how the social housing works, because you were trying to expand that. Because I was saying... Especially here, relating it to our setting here in Ghana. Okay. Um, what the government is supposed to do. Okay. If you get a SNET house, we all understand that it, it is priced cheaper than what commercially you get everywhere else. Okay? So that is an example of a subsidized house. You have some religious institutions and so on also coming out with, with that. In, in, in our environment, if you look at the Snit House and you're renting one, it will be a lot cheaper than going to the open market to rent. Mm -hmm. And that is an example of social housing. So it is lowered. In, in the Nkrumah days, I think uh, what was being done was um, civil servants 
okay, building four civil servants, which is very laudable. And that's what governments piloted their scheme on. And uh, at the risk of sounding like a government advocate, I'll have to say that once that policy is able to take root, it will bring a lot of differences because it will lower the, um, that whole perception. That's the numbers, we are being the deficit. Drowned. Exactly, we are being drowned. And you mentioned 700,000. Exactly. If we are standing at 1.7 million yeah. and we can have 700,000 on the social housing policy program, yes. then we have a, a, a million to now consider for affordable housing. For affordable housing. But you talking yeah. about, assuming we have this social housing in place, now we have 700,000 of it, the deficit. We are looking at the 1 million and you're talking about affordable housing. But affordable housing, uh, even by the real estate developers and individual, individuals trying to build, it's just not affordable. So you want to... You are a real estate developer. You, you, are you know the prices the you give out. You are, they, they are directing the conversation mm -hmm. towards the price of homes. Yeah. And, and the I think that's the key consideration in saying it's affordable. It is one of the considerations. Mm -hmm. but it's that, the key. Uh, but it is one of them, and it is made up of several elements. Okay, explain okay. to us. It is made up of several elements. The cost of labor, one. The, 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 the cost of um, 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 input. Okay, and input is what creates the home. You add the labor to it, and it creates a home. If those are expensive, then... The end result is the house you get. Now, if you go to a quantity so Is it just with the labor or you would have to look at materials? You're considering social yes, that's amenities? that's what I call the, the inputs. The inputs. The inputs. Mm -hmm. it, it includes bringing electricity and water to, to right. the house. Okay, the inputs. Everything that needs to go in, including the labor. And you realize that it is expensive. If you go to a quantity surveyor and you get a, a quotation mm -hmm. for a two-bedroom house, mm -hmm. you would understand that when someone says they are selling a house for 25,000 US dollars, after paying for land, they in some cases paying twice for it, then you realize that there is hardly any profit on there, especially if the person is going to pay tax. So the only way that works is if you're building in numbers, in huge numbers. And when you're building in huge numbers, and people are not able to afford to, to buy the homes of you, then you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. No one is in business to lose. Okay, so nobody is in business to lose, and I believe that you're also looking for an affordable house to buy. So look no further. Star Properties, in partnership with Advanced, Constru Advanced Construction, they have built or develop over 100 houses and it's going for affordable prices. All you have to do is just call this number 05012, uh, sorry, 05012 or 05012792884 or send us an email at vigoasilverstartowers.com for further inquiries. Make sure to visit our site that is star towers, uh, silverstartowers.com for more inquiries. We take a break. The show returns shortly. Thank you for staying with us. It's been an interesting discussion so far in the studio with me. I have with me Mr. Kojo Bani, CEO of um, that is uh, Smart Ghana Limited, and he's also a former council executive member of Greater. He joins me on a discussion that is uh, a myth or a reality when you talk about affordable housing. And it's very important I get to have your take. What do you have to say about it being a myth or a reality when we talk about affordable housing? So share with me. What you have to say on this number 0500 180 697 0500 180 697 it could be via whatsapp or sms and i would be reading them could you uh, yes. be, before we went on leave you were talking about the input and the labor all becoming a contributing factor to why you know we see the prices we see um let me go a bit into that in terms of uh, we're talking of what prices are. And at the moment, a bag of cement is 100 cents. Mm. Now, um, for a two-bedroom house, how many are you going to use? Then you talk about even just to buy a door for your house, how much does it come to? Now, you, you, we also know that a lot of the inputs are imported. And um, duty keeps going up. Mm -hmm. Okay, exchange rates keep
keeps uh, exchange rates against the foreign currencies which we buy the produce in keeps going up. And so the cumulative effect is that the house prices have moved up. Okay. In the in, in the recent past, we could get um, <clears throat> a two bedroom house for let's say twenty five thousand U.S. dollars on this market. Today. You, uh, the cheapest I have seen from where I sit is 32,000. And that is by uh, um, a, a developer I call a, a, a close to social housing developer. Now, now talking about two bedroom in Ghana being around $32,000, yes. um, a little research I did to Nigeria. In Nigeria, you'll be having a two bedroom house almost close to $10,000. Yes, 10 to 12,000 US dollars. Yes. 10 to 12,000. Their structures are totally different. Their what are they doing different? That makes it for, so affordable. Their structures for land is different. They are structures for manufacturing in country. Manufacturing? Manufacturing. That is the materials used for materials construction. Materials used for construction. Even solar panels, they are being done at a commercial rate. So what are some of the materials that are produced <coughs> right in Nigeria? Um, I can't give you a <coughs> comprehensive um, <coughs> um, list. Sorry. But I know that their input costs are a lot lower, and they have an equivalent of grader. I think it's not Naran, or, uh, yes, I've forgotten the name of them, mm -hmm. but they have an equivalent, and at the um, grader level, executive level, we, we work with them. But we know from comparables that, you know, their houses are cheaper, and it's mainly because of input, in, input costs. Okay, talking about input costs, you also mentioned that is the materials and the duty on them, that is the tax on them. Do you think the government uh, is also not friendly with developers when you consider the tax they put on these materials? Um, governments would always tax, sometimes just spend. Um, and and um, that's the world over. Um, but we also know that governments have tried to come in with ways of manufacturing and making it easier for people to set up uh, initiatives here to manufacture. We know there are now a few cement factories in here. Mm -hmm. However, for cement, they need clinker, which they import. Okay, And so, again, you are hit by the duties and so on. And then, not only that, um, the cost of electricity to do the manufacturing is also high. And so that's compared to our neighbors, compared to Nigeria. And then if you do the comparables, you find out that, you know, it's a lot more expensive here than over there. But, but uh, let me go to this. I think in, uh, recently, somewhere this year, uh, Dr. Randy Abe, good morning, Metro TV, mm -hmm. and he did a, a comprehensive analysis of why cement was costing so high. And with that, we all realized that, look, the task component mm -hmm. was very high. Yes. Don't you think the government is not also supporting the agenda of affordable housing? Governments have a balancing act to do. And, and that balancing act includes making sure the economy is kept on track. And so if governments, in this wisdom, believes that it has to tax, and, you know, and by doing that, affect several different areas of, of, of our endeavors, then they will do that. And it's not just um, that, it's also... But when if, it's if, excessive, if, if, if you, when it's excessive. Uh, excessive is, is a relative word. But if you look, if you look at the, even the price of fuel, the pricing of fuel is a major, has a major effect on different things in this country, and, and including carting our cement from supplier to our, our sites. And so it is a whole range of things. But if government has the means of lowering these taxes, I'm sure they can see the benefits that would accrue to the economy and to the populace. So now, talking about the government giving subsidies or giving tax breaks to even developers, about five years ago, we had that in existence. And your people, that's the developers, they were abusing it. It was that when you start developing for a period of five years, the government wasn't going to tax you as a real estate developer. Then what most of the developers were doing is that after five years, 
they collapse the business, they start another one, escaping. Can I, can I correct you there? Okay, go. When you say most of the developers, I'll take issue with that. I wouldn't say most of the developers. Okay, fair enough. There, but there, quite there a number of the developers. There, there, there you be. agree with me when I say quite a number no, of the... No, because we don't have the figures. Okay. And so I wouldn't say that. And so I'll but that was the reason why the government said, you know what, I'm going to take this tax break away from you. That was one of the reasons. The yes. other reason was so, the government so, needed money. Yes, I agree. But don't you think if your other uh, comrades or let's say co-developers, they paid or were honest with what the government presented to you, probably it will still have been in existence. I, without... wouldn't, I wouldn't accept that at all. Mm. I wouldn't accept that at all because... Um, if, you, if you check, um, members of Greda do pay their taxes. But it's not everybody that's a member <clears throat> of Greda. And so people should aspire to do that. Or, or, or certain instruments need to be put in place so that... To make every we, developer. Yes, so that we have a code of conduct which governs everyone else. But if um, we are to say that, oh, there are people building houses around the corner... And, you know, when they see the police coming, they run away. And because of that, those doing legitimate business should be penalized. I wouldn't accept no, that. that. I wouldn't accept that. I, I agree with you. I, 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 I certainly agree with you. But I think also going forward, if Greater, in partnership with the government, could consider uh, a regulatory body, that is also going to oversee, even with the pricing of houses, that would be very good. Because it's become like a lucrative business. Everybody wants to venture into real estate. Yes, they, they will tell you, okay, when you're able to build a house, you can sell it twice, you know, uh, the money you put in. So most I of the time, the profit. I wonder who tells you that. No, this is, oh, we, 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 we get to hear these things. <laughs> from, I understand I from where you're coming from. As a sources. member of Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, I understand. You definitely would want to also keep the integrity for developers. But let's look at the reality. Mm. Out there, almost everybody wants to build if not to get, you know, uh, good rent money, it's also about the good profit when you are done building and selling. People, uh, uh, the property business is a good business, and people aspire to get into it. Yes. But I would not agree that there are excessive prop profits. So as a developer, yes. you are not making much profit? No. And I no. say that with a straight face. I, I can see that. <laughs> yes. No. No, it is a very difficult terrain where, for example, people build and there's no one to buy the homes because the, 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 you know, the prices have shot up. Mm. Prices of everything has shot up, including the land which the house is built on. You know, so it is not an easy terrain at all. And when you take a whole lot of money, sometimes borrowed money, and put it in the ground, you have committed the funds. Okay, yeah. and you cannot go back and say, "Oh no, the the the, you know, all the prices have gone up everywhere. Also, I'm not going to sell my house anymore." You have to get rid of it, and uh, it is a difficult terrain. And so, yes, people are welcome to come and join, but come with your ideas as to how to move it forward. And I say that if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and it doesn't work, you need to change track. You need to take change track. And what we are looking at. For example, on our side, we are looking at different um, technologies, including some fast-build technologies, mm. okay, to, to build. And maybe it might be exactly the same because the inputs are the same. But in terms of the labor cost, if you, instead of building over a six-month period, we build over one month, then it makes things faster. And so those are some of the things that we are looking at to try and bring the pricing down. Rising down, interesting discussion so far. Um, could you buy me in the studio? We are taking a break. The show is back after this. Humble housing, a myth or a reality, and why? Send in your messages to us on WhatsApp. The number is 0500 687 and we will be reading your messages. First message coming in. So we dive into our first message on WhatsApp. The first is is in fact affordable housing is a myth because how many government workers can afford besides 
Besides, all affordable housings are being quoted in dollars. And if convert in cities, hmm, so how can this be a reality? Good afternoon. I must be frank with you. The houses are too expensive for the Ghanaian people to afford. Um, I'm a third pair wisdom from Pantan. The cost of houses in, in Ghana is too much. What makes me sick the most is the quoting of prices in dollars. Are we paid in dollars? You can still keep sending in your messages. The WhatsApp number is 0500180697. What are some of the indicators of a house and being of a house being affordable or not? In my view, affordable housing is a big myth. That's from Jay. Is affordable housing from government perspective? Or from the consumer's perspective that will give us a better understanding so that will be all for the interactive segment but before i leave to me if i'm going to get the funds from emmanuel get then funds i would say affordable how i would say that it's, it's a reality but if get, i'm not getting the wait, funds oh my goodness no, with the uh, project okay. i'm supervised uh, mm -mm. Okay, a minute it is if, if you're not getting the funding from me then it's not a reality no it's not but if you're getting the funding from me it then is it, a then, reality, exactly. And I'll be asking, why would I be funding it? Why, why not fund your project? Because you're, you're building um, um, technologies. What is wrong with you funding it? You can't afford it. Trying to make the whole you're doing world. it for me. Thank you, darling. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So that was Audrey Dushay Kafu there with the interactive segment. Just like she said, you can keep your messages still coming on the WhatsApp number 0500 180 697. Now, it's also very, very important that you get to know of the Zypers concrete product. It's used to protect buildings against the adverse effect of water. With Zypers concrete product, you can protect your building against rising dam and in situations where you have leakages and cracks. Even rain traces on your building, you have the ultimate protection against these defects that you see on your building. Again, if you are a contractor, an architect, or probably a consultant on a big project, remember for your basement, your septic tanks, even with the swimming pools, especially the ones we keep on top of the building, make sure you apply Zappes concrete products so that it wouldn't be leaking, so that it will not be affected by cracks and also rising down. It doesn't just protect it against water, you also have a protection against the other building elements like the reinforcement, what you normally say, iron rod. So call us for bulk purchase on this number 0302-681581. 0302681581 or on this number as well 0208110328 0208110328 so locate us we are at Adabraka de Farisco Junction could you back to you now a simple statistics of the messages that came in 100% of them is 100% most people saying it's a big myth. I just use the term, the phrase, frankly speaking, it's just a big lie. So I don't understand why you think it's a reality. And they asked if it was... And you're arguing me, they, it's they, not they, true. They asked if it was from government or not. Uh, we know the government See? has failed. I do not want us to delve into the government bit because it's a reality. Looking at the deficit, 101.7 million, clearly the government alone can't do this. That's why the government along the line partnered with, you know, private developers. But still, the reality is that with the incoming of private developers, it's still expensive. And most people are saying, this time around, it's not me. You saw the messages yourself. Did you drive? I do drive. Did you buy your car? Yes, please. I hope you don't ask me what, my car what, I'm driving. What was the price of the car 10 years ago and the price today? Or five years ago? 10 years is too far off. I mean, the change, you can tell. Yes, you can tell. And so it's not, it's not affordable by you driving. No, that's not fair. You okay. see, let let's, me say this. If you, uh, if you're going to talk about my car, it depends on the kind of car I'm using. No, 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 just a basic it, car. Just it's a basic car. Look, let's make it a, motorbike, a motorcycle. You are looking at 15,000? Right. Uh -huh. and, and who can afford that? Who, who, is that affordable? That's on the average, I would say, is affordable, even though I don't want us right. to dwell on motorbikes. No, let's, we're let's not come going to dwell on motorbikes. We're, we're going to dwell on reality. You're making a scenario. Yes, reality and what the reality is. Um, people buy what they can afford. People who cannot afford some rents in certain areas live in the slums mm -hmm. and they, 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 they pay rents. Kiosk tax. Thank you. Kiosk, kiosk rent. Yes, they pay kiosk rent. 
you see? And so there are different levels. Someone will drive a car, someone will ride a motorcycle because that's their affordability point. Now we are saying that housing is such an essential thing in, in, in life that the government ought to take care of the people uh, under its care. Mm -hmm. And what needs to be done is to take care of those who cannot afford it. And that becomes about 70% of the population. Mm. Okay? And um, unless government says they're going to tax us about 70% to do it, then it is virtually not going to be possible. And so they need to take, start from somewhere and take the, a bottom-up approach. And that's what I would advocate. And that's what um, uh, the, the president of Greda has been working towards, mm. to ensure that government creates an enabling environment to enable people get cheaper mortgages, which is now led now into the National Mortgage Fund, which is supporting that, that, that um, um, uh, initiative. And if you follow that through and look at the, the, the prongs of the, the key points in there, you realize that we are moving somewhere, but it's going to be a structured movement. It's an interesting message that just came in, but let me uh, tell our viewers that the line is open. You can call and be part of the discussion here. So call the number on your screen and we will be glad to have you on the discussion. So this message says that uh, Kwejo spoke about uh, taxes uh, on the materials. But we have Trifold here in Takrade, and yes, though, towels are expensive. So you are saying in Nigeria, Good. they manufacture them in the country. Yes. That's the reason why, at the end of the day, when they develop houses, it's affordable. But we have Trifold here, and yet towels are expensive, even with the cement companies. Also. So first of all, sorry, Trifold. let me go to Wisdom from Pantan. Hello, Wisdom. Yeah, hello, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I wouldn't wait for you to even ask me the question. It is a big mess. <laughs> it is a big mess. It, it is actually a statement. Yes. Okay. In our area here, just a small house, three bedroom, um, it's around $200,000. Uh, $200,000. So $200,000. Yes. A normal teacher, a normal teacher, a normal business school teacher. When am I... When I sat down and striked the the number of years that I, I would have to work before I can even buy that, <laughs> you know, so you can see that it's not easy. It is not easy. That, Th thank you I'm very doing. much, Wisdom, a normal basic teacher, and he just can't comprehend uh, what he's supposed to do to buy two hundred thousand dollars at pan time. Okay, could you? In Germany, they have a culture of renting. They have a culture of renting instead of buying. It is not everyone who can afford to buy a house. And so even those who can afford to buy in Germany don't buy because the culture is different. There are rental companies. There are uh, companies who offer places for rent. And that is where the majority of people stay. Okay? You don't need to buy a house. It's an aspiration. We would all love to buy our own homes. Okay. Um, in Ghana, and I'll go again to the transport system, we have people who drive in 4 by 4s We have people who drive in, um, you know, saloon cars. And we have people who ride motorbikes. It's not everyone who can afford. Okay. Okay. And so okay. there is a progression. There is, indeed. Yes, there is. So le let me go to talk. Hello, Mr. Danso. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Danso. Yes, good Please afternoon. Please go on. Uh, in fact, um, I, I like your, your statement of affordable housing a myth or a reality. Okay. In fact, I would say it's a myth. A uh, big myth because uh, uh, if government, government says Kwame Nkrumah, what Kwame Nkrumah said we allowed it to go. Why did we allow it to go? Why did we stop the state house operation from, you know, building, continuing with uh, the work of, you know, affordable housing? You see, it, it, when the people, they, they, 
uh, successive governments come and make now noise, excuse me from use of number uh, that uh, they they want to build affordable housing for you know for who? Mm-hmm. In fact, they only take the money. It's an avenue, an avenue for corruption. They only take the money and they go and build houses that you know the the, the poor and vulnerable uh, cannot afford. Mm-hmm. So they should not, if they want to build houses for middle class for themselves, they should say that yes. Okay. But they take money, they they tax pay the taxpayers money. Thank and you. They build houses. Big, big houses. How is that? The, the, the okay, Mr. Danzo, I believe uh, your submission is well received. And by the way, Takwa is one of the cities I enjoy to stay in. I mean, it's just a great place to be. Yes, Takwa. I don't know if you've been to Takwa before. To Takwa. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes it's uh, a very good place to be. I mean, I like the environment. Now, he's saying, mm-hmm. your government, our government, yes. at the end of the day, even when they are done with the development, the kululu that goes on there doesn't get to the right people who need these properties. But before then, let me also talk to Aja. Hello, Aja from Kanda. Hello, good, good evening. Please, I want to contribute to the conversation ongoing. Go on, Aja. I, I think affordable housing is possible, but our, our Ghanaians, we have this mindset of poverty. We don't want to move forward. That is our problem. Aja, come again. You're saying affordable I'm houses. Saying that, I'm saying that Ghanaians, we have this mindset of poverty. We have a mindset of poverty. That's what I think. We don't think. We don't think beyond our means. We always think that we always, we always, we always bustle ourselves. Okay. So, uh, how do you help me with this? Affordable I housing. Is it a, that, is, that, affordable that, housing? That, is it a reality that, or is it met? It's a very, it's a very big reality. It's a very I big have, reality. Yes. You have to Great. know what's your program. You got in the Republic Bank. Yes. And then they, they talked about this. They talked about the mortgage. The mortgage program, right? Yes. It's a very big. It's a very, they, they talk about the mortgage, right? Yes, they did. I can right. I watched it yesterday, last week. So if you, if we can afford, if we can go for the mortgage and get the house, why can't we afford it? Thank I you very much, Ajay. Thank you very much, Kojo. Mm-hmm. You've scored one. <laughs> I didn't know you were counting. <laughs> no, you scored one. <laughs> From the messages to the phone ins, you scored one. How do you support you? Uh, good. Adia, thank you, but um, she's making a valid point. And she's our last caller. She's making a valid point. And it's a you think it's our mindset? Um, we, when we are seeing the reality, the big figures, it's still a mindset? You, the, you see, we can see the big figures, but um, look, to build a two-bed house, even with the government affordable projects, and I've sat in a lot of meetings and I've done a lot of calculations, they are not... Able, I hope these are your final words. One minute. Th- yes, they are not able to meet um, the 32,000 US dollar sale price, which greater members are, sa- are selling their homes for. Government are not able to meet that. And we are talking about situations where I think it's the Kumasi project where it was started by Kufour. And the bit which has been put in already was more or less discounted and just what was needed to top up to build it is what was being charged. And still, it wasn't, you know, what you would term as affordable, mm-hmm. you know. And so, <clears throat> and the Kululu that, uh, what was his name, raised? Uh, uh, Mr. Danso from Mr. Danso Taco. raised, the Kululu which he raised. I mean, look, what is being put in place now, as far as I see it, it'll be very difficult for the Kululu to happen. Mm. Okay, um, we know uh, in Nigeria today, they also have a national mortgage fund, a national housing fund. And uh, over there, they, you know, just like uh, sometimes you experience when you go to government institutions, the go slow of, oh, I can't find your form and, and mm. so on. It's been happening in some states in Nigeria. Okay. Okay. We but, should be wrapping up. Okay. So, so the your final words. The way it stands is if you put the structures in place, the structures for even distributing these. In Nigeria, they're charging everyone on their taxes. So they pay 2.5%. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work. Are those your because, final words? Because not everyone, not everyone can get it. But I find my final word is that it takes time. It takes time. So that was Mr. Kwejo Bani, CEO for Smart Ghana Limited, also a former executive council member 
of Greater. It's been an interesting discussion. We'll be coming your way in the coming weeks with similar discussions on affordable housing. So make sure you do not miss an episode. My name, Emmanuel Oswansa. This has been The Pyramid Show here live on Joy News Television. I pray you have a fruitful week. Thank you.